my website right now and download my free course on alternate picking mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to alternate picking mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. In this video, I'm going to build on something that you know already, uh, which is always the best idea because you learn 10 times faster, um, just how it is. Because it, it, by expanding something, you can, have, you can get a totally different thing. Right? You can take the same basic dish when you cook and then add different spices and bam, you have a totally different dish tasting in a totally different way. The same thing goes here by adding just a couple of notes, by changing a shape, by adding a shape, uh, you can achieve new results. And in this case, we're going to add, if you play like, if you've got the minor pentatonic down, right? In this case, I was playing an I, A minor uh, chord and a G, and I was in the key of A minor, you could say, right? At least that's what it sounds like. So A minor and then G. And I was just using the A minor pentatonic for both chords, like most people would, right? But then I'm adding, I go to the fifth of the A. Let's say you're using the A minor, that's what you focus on, right? On any track. Then you go to the fifth, which is just, one string up and two frets up. And then you play the minor pentatonic there, which would be the E minor pentatonic. And that creates a cool thing. It adds the ninth to the A minor pentatonic. So by mixing the two, by using shapes you know already, either by you know, play, playing um, the first position here and then another position in the E minor or by moving all the way up to the, the, the 12th fret, you achieve a totally different result. Uh, by using tools that you have already. So let's look into it close up. Let me explain to you exactly what I mean so you can start practicing it right away. So how are we doing this? Well, you can use the first position. Again, we're in the key of E minor here. And we're playing uh, four chords from the E natural minor scale, which is the same seven notes as the G major scale. But what we're doing is basically choosing our E minor first position up here. You can choose any position if you like to. But then we're mixing it with uh, the pentatonic scale that's on the fifth of the root. So if you're playing in the key of uh, melodic rock, pop, playing in the key of E minor, and you're using your E minor pentatonic, then you can simply go up one fifth, up to the B there. This is the fifth, right? Up one string and then up two frets. And if you play the B, um, what is it, minor pentatonic, yeah, the B minor pentatonic, then you will actually change one note in the E minor pentatonic. See, this is just, if you focus on the, the, the three strings here, the, the G, B, and E, then the E minor pentatonic looks like this, right? Got that minor third interval on both the B and E, and then 12, 14 on the G. If you then shift to the B minor pentatonic, you will play this. One note changes. That's the only difference between those two scales. And that is you go from the third to the ninth of E, right? So instead of playing, you play. And that that ninth over the E or over any chord in the key of E minor is really a beautiful, uh, cool addition. And if you wanna get out of the pentatonic scale and you're really good at playing it, adding that shape on top of your first position can just do the trick for you uh, and give you some rapid results. Um, I don't recommend, or that didn't work for me at least, some people say, okay, you can take the first position shape and just move it. You know, if you want to play the B minor, just move it down to the seventh fret. And that can create some cool, interesting lines with sliding back and forth between the same shape. But it's, I think it's more useful to apply, even though it takes a little bit uh, longer, to apply the actual K shape on top of the first position. So this is your first position minor pentatonic, right? And then I take my... B minor pentatonic and put it in the exact same place, which gives me the shape of 12 and 14 uh, on the low E string, 12 and 14 on the A, and also on the D, and then 11, 14 on the G, 12 and 15 on the B, and 12 and 14 on the high E. All 
right? So that's the that's the shape I put on top here. So I can play. Start by practicing the E minor pentatonic on just two string, and then shift to B minor pentatonic. Go on to the next string. So B minor pentatonic, E minor pentatonic. B. So you really get those two shapes integrated closely, right? On each string and, and each set of strings. So it really becomes super easy to see the E minor pentatonic and see the B on top of the E there. Once you have that down, you're ready to, to play some music. So let me play the, the chords of playing an E minor here. And we go to the C major chord and then G and then D and then back to E minor. Minor pentatonic. Okay, and then I can add the. See, as soon as I hit that, I get a note that sounds really interesting. So I start in the E, and then move into the B minor. E minor. B minor. B minor. E minor. And B minor. And back to E. The trick here, the whole, the whole practice uh, idea here is to have the jam track in the background or the, the, the chords that you've been playing and then to, 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 to figure out when is that B minor really cool over what chords in the chord progression. You don't even have to know the chords, you just have to listen and be aware of when the whole chord progression turns around, right? You need to know when the first chord comes again. If you forget yourself and all the notes you play and don't listen to the music, then you're lost. So. You have to feel every single time you go down to E minor. It has to be an automatic thing in your body. And until it's, it's an automatic thing, you focus more on the chords than you do on what you play. Uh, all right? So that's the whole trick. Um, and a really cool way to expand your pentatonic playing. So remember that if you want to get the most out of the time you just spent watching this video, you need to put it into action right away. Not in 10 minutes, right away or tomorrow. Uh, and if you can't do that, or if you think, oh, this is not important enough, Klaus, then when is it important? Is it important to practice at any point? Or are you practicing something right now that's more important to keep focusing on right now? Then, you know, make a reminder in your calendar in three weeks or whatever and saying, okay, I need to remember this because I really need to go into this, but I need to do so with focus and concentration for an entire week. Then make a reminder in your calendar, include the YouTube link. Whatever you do, make a decision. Action must flow from what you just seen, right? And, and not doing anything is also action, but if you're not doing anything, you know, then that is a decision that this is not important. And if it is, act on it, right? Okay, so uh, subscribe to this channel, of course, uh, if you're not doing that already, and you can go download our free courses right below here. Hope to see you in the next video. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it, do it now, do it.